This is Haroja Shai with another episode of Satoshi Treasure Hunters. And this is the weekly update of About the Hunt. So let's get into it. Uh, this is going to cover some of the news that has occurred from June 6th through the 15th. And it's an update on both the room key and the clan key. So the room key has been declared found on the site. Um, but the key itself has not been publicly disclosed by any of the uh, groups or individual client members that may have, um, or hunters, if you will, that have found it as of yet. Uh, the exhibit in my room, which takes place in the, in the Anta space, uh, well, you have to July 7th, I can guess, for you to be able to uh, obtain that key. Uh, the clan key has ended. There has not yet been a declared winner as far as who has had the most uh, blocks, if you will, successful clan blocks. I, I expect that probably either later today or tomorrow there will be a declared winner, at which point uh, somebody out, out of that clan, the first, you know, the first individual, will receive their um, unique key. And so that leaves up, up to this point until the clan key has been declared found, if you will. Uh, the earth key, the obon key, the business card key, the first art tour key. Um, and until the clan key is declared found, uh, those keys uh, are still out in the wild. Now there was a new key drop today and we'll do, I will do a clue day episode about that. I'm just going to focus on those five keys as at as, as, as present haven't been um, declared uh, found, if you will. <clears throat> but there is also some a bit of news that goes on with the uh, the game itself for the hunt, and we're going to really get into it because it, it was a little messy, if you will, and I can understand where some of it is coming from, and some of it I just I don't know if it's uh, some game making psychology that's going on here, some game theory, but uh, let's kind of get into that. So as you, so as you can see on the site, the room key has been declared found. Uh, the clan key at the present moment is unknown, but the the time frame for that solution, you know, was June fifteenth, um, midnight uh, GMT time. And then the new key, the cult key, which I will do a clue video on, um, has been released. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what was in the proof of work uh, newsletter, which is a letter that um, Eric Melser releases um, pretty much on a weekly basis about the ongoing projects that are occurring within the cryptocurrency space. He did talk about uh, the Satoshi Treasure Hunt um, in that newsletter. So I'm going to just read... Uh, the parts that are relevant. Um, proof of work number 70. Uh, this was released June 13th. So normally I try to avoid speculating on the medium term or far future. My job is to speculate on the relatively near future. And I know firsthand how hard it is to do well. But it indulge me in a bit of a long-term speculation for the length of this email. I like to think out loud a bit about what's happening in the state of power as a direct result of technology. I also won't bother to hide my glee about these developments as a Jew and I have a deep-seated distress of nation-states. I have been dismayed by the increased power of the surveillance and weapons technologies have granted to state actors. That the tide is changing now is a source of deep joy for me and a strong motivator to keep me investing in this space as is as if for uh, as if for the mind gazing wasn't enough. Haha. -ha. The first and most obvious trend is that uh, cryptocurrencies eroding the state's ability to print money. This started with Bitcoin and was clearly part of Satoshi's intent in releasing the Bitcoin software. Unsurprisingly, this has become the most apparent in countries with extremely weak fiat currencies like Venezuela. It also happens slowly, then fast, because the fiat financial systems resist outflows pretty well. But at the end of the day, is a leaky bucket and the cat is not going back into the bag on, the, on this one. The money landscape in December 28th. 2008 was entirely national fiat currency. In January 2009, it suddenly included a de decentralized digital currency. In January 2019, Bitcoin and a plethora of altcoins exists. 
In January 2029, I suspect that the fake Facebook coin style corporate currencies and decentral currencies like Bitcoin and national fiat currencies will all be competing with the former two categories, making up a very large chunk of the world commerce. Which I, I think is a very fair assessment. That's just that's just the nature of things. I do think that Bitcoin will prevail, but I do believe that for this space to grow and be a truly um, fully functioning economic economy, we need to focus on more than just store value. The second ongoing trend is the inability of the state defense agencies to deal with what William Gibson termed as an increase in individual lethal agency. Put simply, the number of people one one determined individual can kill if they want to is increasing and shows no sign of slowing down. From a state power perspective, that means that waging war even on a supposedly much weaker adversary is way more costly because they can respond asymmetrical, i.e. through terror attacks. The final trend seems to be reducing state power is the existence of the internet as an information dissemination tool. This one's a bit of a mixed bag, but the internet permits surveillance that increases state power, but it also permits people to share information widely in a way that was previously only available to state actors. Uh, we're seeing that played out in Sudan, Venezuela, and uh, in Hong Kong as we speak now. And particularly with the states with the whole um, police brutality, if you will. I think on balance this will end up decreasing state power. Surveillance will become more and more difficult as financial transactions move on to things like mobile coins, Zcash, and as communications increasingly are over and in encrypted, open source tools like Signal, at the same time, the tools of mass influence will be wielded increasingly by non-state actors, uh, corporations, small interest groups, etc. Uh, much of that is being played out right now between uh, Google, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, one of the main differences between people who are, who have been in the crypto space for a long time and people who are readily new is the degree into which they understand that cryptocurrencies are inherently an anti-state technology, which is true, and need to be built from the ground up withstanding multi-state attacks. At the moment, very few in the cryptocurrencies current, very few, if any, cryptocurrencies need this far, although Bitcoin is by far the closest. Uh, Nivelle or Kant referred to the state as the final boss for crypto, and I agree with that assessment and think that the boss fight might be coming sooner than people think. More next week, especially interesting updates this week on Sai and Maker. So, Stoji Treasure Journal. A release of the clan key which required users to start a chain by shooting videos of themselves outside making a clan gesture and posting the video on Twitter. To extend the clan the chain, the next person should have some sh someone shoot a video of them holding the phone, playing the, the previous video in the chain, and making the same secret gesture, and then quote tweet the previous block in the chain. Every tweet of this game includes a hashtag. Uh, clan chain. All tweets can be seen here. This clue will end on June 15th, and we kind of know this. Uh, so far, some of the longest chains include the Cypher Toshi, Steen Clan, Clark's Clan, among which uh, Cypher Toshi is so far um, the longest with 51 tweets. So let's kind of talk about this. Um, I kind of like this post here because it kind of gives you the state of frame of mind of the game makers, of why they're here in the space of Bitcoin. They're definitely coming from a kind of a the cypherpunk, cyberpunk, not necessarily a complete anarchist uh, perspective about nation states, um, economic power, and the ability of the individual to grow, if you will, and combat the, um, the various um, oppressive natures that the state has implemented on individual growth and people overall. Um, So you have that, and just a, just in general, a mention of the Satoshi Treasure Journal is in this post, along with other cryptocurrency projects. I do want to know that I did do a um, William Gibson's um, book review of The Burning Chrome, which was a collection of, social, of, of uh, short stories on him that he had done. A couple of them were co-authored with other people. Um, they were collected around 1986. It was an object that you had to give to the field agent number two in order to receive his key. And I will have a link right there um, in this video to that video. So I don't know what to quite make of this. This looks fairly legit. But Espasco Bitcoin, some clue, kind of clue has arrived to Espasco Bitcoin. 
uh, time ago, greeting centers. And they posted uh, the Spasco Bitcoin Community Center and what looks like um, Satoshi's treasure, a mock-up, if you will, of what possibly could be the past phrase uh, for a potential clue. So that is a potential place that um, a potential clue for a key is going to happen. Um, so Espasco Bitcoin is in Buenos Aires. Uh, this is the link to their website. Uh, I've heard of it a few times in, in talking to the space as a place that people have gone and gathered and talked about Bitcoin. So it's a meetup center, if you will, uh, a space uh, for that particular region. Uh, I will have a link to the Twitter account and to the tweet itself. Facebook is taking way too long to get on here. So, yes, updated their address. It's, you know, it's a meetup center for people to um, gather um, and talk about Bitcoin within the region and the space. Uh, so I guess another uh, physical location in this case in, in occurred in Argentina. So that's interesting. That's a little different. And kind of gives a, a heads up to all the different clans and individual hunters out there that maybe, you know, you might want to expand your network or look to different avenues to be able to go to these different places to be able to get to these physical locations. So um, Eric had tweeted on, it said right here, June 13th, that um, they have some exciting news about the hunt itself, um, some cool stuff that they're going to be doing. Some are speculating it has to do with the app that they have been talking about uh, through the Twitter sphere and through media that is something that they wanted to achieve. We'll see, uh, so keep an eye out on that, that there's going to be some changes, if you will. So the Magellan clan is one of the clans, among the public clans that's been out there. Um, they made a blog post, uh, fairly active, they publish their keys. Um, you know, people have issues with them because they, they've issued a token in which they are on reward hunters with the value of the token is supposed to be backed by the prize, which means they have to win the prize in order to fund the token. So, and in this space, people, you know, there's maximalists, there's people that are a little weary of ICOs and, and tokens and other altcoins um, because they've either been burned or a lot of them turn out to be scams. So there's a lot of feelings about this particular coin. So the Magellan clan refuses to continue the hunt without seeing proof of the prize of $1 million. Uh, the Magellan clan was first organized clan the Sochi Treasure. I don't think that's the case. I would almost say uh, elementary voice clan was kind of first. Uh, it became also the biggest clan with more than 150 hunters and the SPM token owners. Most of the hunters from the other clans follow the blog articles on the Magellan clan, and today the leaders in the Magellan clan took an important decision. Magellan will be the first clan refusing to continue the hunt. The reason? The prize of one million is still more or less imaginary. The riddles are interesting and it's not about the pri all about the prize, so here is why we're out. One, we're saying that so many people who claim that they don't trust governments and corporations and want to decentralize the world are actually trusting a group of people that states that there is a prize of one million. How is the group of people better than the government and corporations? Nothing against the creators of the game, it's just a hypothetical question. Two, we tokenize the prize, that this is on them, offering SDM to tokens to clan members. The value of the SDM token depends on our chances to find the treasure. We are not convinced that there is a treasure, and we don't want to give false hope to the SDM holders. Without proof of the prize, we are out. Uh, the game lost a bit of its charm with the last clues that are focused mainly on marketing. We saw too many company logos, uh, especially the clan chain riddle lost us. It's designed in a way which gives users a chance to cheat by registering users who obviously don't even know what they're doing. We don't like this and we refuse to be part of it. Um, yeah, it was a marketing tool. I, I particularly didn't like that particular um, solution for that key, for that clue. Uh, that's why I haven't participated in it. But I understand why um, some people have. And 
like I stated when I talked about the clan key, um, and particularly about privacy, uh, you know, there's some issues to it about the whole marketing thing, and I just, I just don't think it was a big win for them. As the Toshi Trailer is failing, Toshi Treasure is failing to attract people who are new in the crypto space, and we hope this will change. Uh, conclusion. This concept of Toki Treasure is great. We, we really like the riddles. They are very exciting. We also like creator, the, the creators. They're doing a great job. The only reason to leave the competition is that we don't want to risk giving false hope to clan members. We advise clan members to continue to solve riddles, riddles, enjoy the game, and maybe join other clans. But please don't have, don't have very high... Please... <clears throat> but please don't... But please don't have very high expectations about the prize and the value of the SDM tokens. We will be back for you if the creators announce that you guys holding the prize. So I guess they're out. So this caused a bit of a knuckle. Some people celebrate it simply because of the fact that they don't like the Magellan Clan in, in accordance with the fact that they have the, um, you might say, the issue with the whole tokenization. I do understand the frustration that they have with the fact that it has not been disclosed. The the um, public address containing the Bitcoin, um, I think that's a mistake, given the history in this space about you know trustlessness and things of that nature, but also just other puzzle clues that have existed in the space have always released the, the public address. They have always released the public address. Uh, part of the solution of finding, finding the puzzle was getting the private key that gains you access to that particular public address. And they've done things like signing to say that yes, this is the public address or, you know, moving like a little Satoshi or something like that out and back in. Things of that nature to demonstrate that this address is valid, they control it, signatures, things of that nature. And so people are very frustrated given the history in the space that people have verified. They said, this is the public address, these are the clues, if you solve the puzzle, boom, you know. This is your Bitcoin, this is your Monero, this is your Litecoin, uh, stuff of that nature. And this is really the first big one in which there hasn't been release of a public address, so I understand their frustration. Uh, the fact that some of, a lot of this, the marketing, I think was pretty clear up front when they did the initial media that they were going to get the marketing people on board, that they were going to have third parties, that... This, this is a business for them. So you kind of sort of knew that going in. Um, if you pay attention to the media and the privacy policy. And so the only thing I like about this game so far when it comes to that is you don't have to participate in their marketing. You can keep some of your information back, if you will, and you don't have to um, fork over your info if you don't want to. And that was the thing with the, the find of the egg key uh, for the rabbit key, I believe that was, um, you had to buy an egg to get the solution. Uh, again, the clan key. And we'll talk a little bit about the, the when I did the clue day release about the cult key. Um, the soda can stuff, I guess, meh. I really didn't see it too much as corporatization. I just think that's just the nature of where we live in. Um, is it corporatization if you talk about Coke? I mean, you're getting a Coke, uh, you're getting a Pepsi, you're using Apple Pay. That's just, everything's branded, everything has a name, and, you know, words mean things. Um, so we'll see where that goes. Some think it's a false play where they're trying to mind game people. I don't know. I don't think that that is the case. I think they've stepped back. Given the fact that this game has going, been going on since April, uh, we're in June, so it's been two months, they tokenize things, so they have some kind of obligation, if you will, to give value to that token. And so I can see them maybe being concerned about any judiciary responsibility or um, being on a hook for something if there is no prize. So, but that's kind of something they did to themselves and not necessarily the game makers. Okay. So the last couple bits here, um, somebody did go 
probably to the room key in oh all right so i'm linking the show notes to this but about somebody having actually gone to the location in shanghai you know it's actually a real place uh, they went in there expecting a QR code or some type of information, but they did not, in fact, find anything. Uh, this particular hunter who disclosed um, them going to the place, they took pictures for everybody, uh, but they weren't able to, I guess you can say, suss out the clue. Obviously, somebody has, uh, because the, plate, the key has been declared found. And so I just thought I should just share that with you guys that, you know, these physical locations do exist. People are going to them. Um, and it's just a matter of really taking a step back or a breath and just really evaluating the space that you're in and maybe not looking for the obvious, like a QR code, or just kind of analyzing and looking and seeing anything out of place, anything out of the ordinary, or maybe sometimes just the obvious. So that's it uh, for this episode. Just a quick update. Uh, so, the clan key has ended. Uh, we'll know who the actual uh, winner is soon enough. Just a quick update. Uh, the room key has been declared crowned. Uh, the clan key has ended. We should know the winner um, soon enough. There has been a new key release. I will do a clue update on that. Uh, the earth key and the bun key are still out as well as the business card key and the uh, the first art door key. So those keys are out there in the wild. Um, be interesting, it'd be interesting to see how things are progressing. Um, I like the fact that a key has ended, I know the key has dropped. I hope that the game makers are uh, going to be much quicker with these these key drops if you will i would like to see multiple keys dropped at a time like three or four or five this is a game that's supposed to take a, a year to play it would be nice that three or four or five keys are out at the same time for solutions uh, i think it'd make it more engaging i wish they would make the the physical location or at least some kind of time map if you will of physical online mixture if you will of like an indicator so that clans can prepare better if you will and expand their network you know maybe region based saying we're going to release in region one region two region three region four considering um someone's already tweeted out the potential um clue if you will um might be taking place in argentina to be able to figure out a key um, that would be nice on behalf of the game makers. But for the most part, you know, things are progressing. We're all trying to figure things out. We're working on these different keys, working together, you know, forming new clans or getting back into the groove with the other clans. Um, but so far, like I said, I'm pretty happy the fact he ended, he dropped. Um, and we're just kind of moving along, if you will. So that's it for... Uh, this episode, uh, see you on the Clue Day celebration. Uh, this is Rosa Shive, uh, the Toshi Treasure Hunters, and on with the hunt. <laughs>